This week on Life on Jupiter, we are done with the motoring. It's time to install our DIY rigging and raise the mast. approaching Pensacola and we've got a big week ahead of us. We've got to get the boat ready and check out and provision and stand the mast up and put the paperwork in for Mexico. So we have today is what the first? Um, okay so we've got 10 days. We've got so much to do. So many jobs. Uh, tomorrow we're going to take the mast off the boat, so we're hiring a crane, and uh, then I'll get a day, we'll get half a day tomorrow, and then a full day the next day to work on the mast. I'm changing the rigging, DIY, using stay lock fittings, so uh, this is my first time to use stay lock, but it seems to be very easy. I've got to do oil changes. I've got to fit a remote oil filter system. We've got a lot. We've got a lot of other things I can't even think now. Install a new water pump. We've got a lot of stuff to do in the next week. But the most exciting thing really is, I think, is the rigging. The DIY rigging. And this really does look easy. You don't need any special tools. Not even a vice so far. Like, uh, I've played with the Staylock fittings already and... Uh, easy enough to do with just a couple of spanners happy with that so we're just coming into the creek now uh, shortly a couple of miles and we're going to go past the marina where we're going to tie up tomorrow and we'll go and anchor inside the little bay there <sighs> the calm before the storm
Daybreak Marina in position for the crane coming in two and a half hours. So, got to untie the mast, get it, all the shrouds strapped up so that they don't dangle, and we're going to put it on the uh, wharf just along here, which is actually it's ideal for what we need, and start repairing and replacing shrouds. Um, there's a local rigger here, Zern Rigging. So Rick Zern is gonna come down, and, or at least one of his guys, and help me with the furler, because this weekend here in Pensacola is a big air show, and the Blue Angels are gonna be here, and this marina is gonna be flat out with little boats coming in and out, in and out, so we sort of wanna be out of the way. So they're gonna help me with this so we can put the mast up tomorrow. That's the plan. Full steam ahead. Let's get to work. I'm pretty, very happy, but a little bit surprised too that we had absolutely no trouble with the way we had it tied on, mm. lashed down. Um, you know, through the Great Lakes there, we had some big chop. And of course, when big power boats go past, they make a big wake. Mm. Yeah. They didn't move. <laughs> yeah, some, no, most were courteous, but there's some that just go <laughs> past you and you're just rocking like a bloody. What rocks a lot? Something that rocks a lot, we were rocking like that. <laughs> you got to make sure when you do strap these things down, not only do you want to strap it, brace it sideways, but also fore and aft. So we had like a cross attachment here, so it's braced both ways. And the same up forward there. So I think that's why we had no movement at all. We were really pleased with the way it was. We braced it down. All right, so here's our wire. This is 12 mil wire or half inch. I think it's half inch, which is a little bit bigger than 12 mil. We are putting on terminals for the top these are three shrouds, four stay and two cap stays. So we'll show you the stay lock system. So that's a fairly neat end to the wire, so that's cool. Let's uh, rip open the fitting here. I can't quite remember the price of these, but it's around $200 for one fitting. So not cheap but you can use them over and over again. So there's obviously the terminal. Now inside is a cone. I can't remember what they call them, but it's like a cup. And that's what forces the wire to wrap around the end of the cone. So this cone slides over the core of the wire the outer wires spiral around the cone and then you force it down when you screw it together you force it down and it squishes and locks in and that is what makes it strong now these are already pre-treated with anti-seize compound but we're going to put loctite on or thread lock so we don't want the anti-seize compound we're going to remove it with uh, acetone 
Anyway, tip some in. Your toothbrush. Give it a clean. The other half there. Make sure you put this on first. Okay. All right. Now we need to open up these wires. It's a little disconcerting that they may all unravel and get away from you, but they don't. In fact, it's a good idea. Though I haven't found it completely necessary, but to put some tape around about here to help stop it unraveling but I don't think it does just get a pair of multi grips or pliers and start unwinding till it opens like this and then you get your screwdriver and you peel off the top wires Until the core is revealed. So these stay locks are only good for 1 by 19 which is this. 1 by 19 just means one wire with 19 strands. Alright. Almost. So there's our core. Okay. That's the outer layer and that's the core. There should be 12 in there, I think. Not 12, sorry. Uh, seven. Cone. Slides on the top. I need a little tap down. And you want to expose the core about three mil or quarter inch. And then you can wrap it back up. Simple as that. Simple as that. And just make sure that these spiral nicely and evenly. See that? So you just want to make sure they're all evenly spaced around it. Make sure you've got about a quarter inch, three mil sticking out of the end of the cone. And make sure there isn't a strand inside the slit on the cone. We can double check that just before we tighten it up. Alright. So we can put a little pressure upwards and then we can even out the strands. Can you see? This strand has gone inside that slit to make sure that doesn't happen. So you're going to pull him out like that. As long as they're all sort of wrapping around evenly, we can go ahead and tighten it up. That looks pretty good to me. Pretty even? Looks good to me. Make sure you got the cup inside. Now we're not going to seal it yet. We're just going to bend it first. So let's just put it on, dry fitting, tighten it up. Tighten it up pretty strong because we're bending the, the strands into place. Now you don't want the wire to twist, so you hold this piece and you turn this piece. Probably bent enough, so we can just double check, take it apart again. And that's it. 
fairly neat. We can just try and fix that up a little bit. Where's the slot? The slot looks clear. Yep. Just bend this one back. Still got more bending to go, but that's about it. It's pretty well done. We can now thread lock. And fill it with goo. Right, now the idea of the mastic is that it will get pushed up into the wires and come out of this end. So as we tighten it, I want to see mastic come out here, which means all the air has been removed. Here it comes. So that's good. We'll go ahead and tighten that right down now. These are my shorts, I didn't. Definitely our old shorts now. So you, there'll always be a bit of thread exposed here, which is no problem. Don't need to worry about it. See, we didn't need this at all, this tape, so I'm not going to do it anymore. All right. One done. Nice. Next one. Okay. Sorry, it's the Blue Angels practicing here, so that's exciting. Never seen them and I'd love to, and we're gonna see them. We're gonna see them this week.
I asked the riggers to insert the new forestay inside the roller furler. For us to do it by ourselves would have been tricky. The challenge is to get the wire through the six or seven bearings inside the foil. But these boys were a pleasure to watch with their experience and techniques. They made short work of it, but good help does not come cheap. Wow. <laughs> good job. Thanks. <laughs> So we're taking our old shrouds off now so that we can copy them, make the new ones. We're just going to remove it. Yeah. Put the new ones on. Oh. See, that one's a good one. But the one he showed us earlier was not. Mm. That should be sticking out. Okay. This is where I... So I, to get these old ones off, because they're pretty corroded on there, hopefully this will work. I just get a hammer. So I only just do this up a little bit, get a few threads, and then give it a tap. Let's try. There we go. So get the old cone out. So the only thing you need to replace is the cone, because it's been bent in. So throw that away. So this is the old wire anyway, we're throwing this away, because it's all bent. Sometimes hard to get this off. When I ordered the new rigging wire, I added an extra foot to each shroud to allow for any minor adjustments. Now I just lay down the old shroud next to the new ones and cut to size. It was a little bit late for these shrouds, but the riggers mentioned that it is better to use a hacksaw. Using a grinder heats the stainless steel, which may affect the integrity. up about three I guess and just mine started running on all the things I got to do the mast is going up the crane is coming at one o'clock lunchtime and uh, I figure there's a nice big floodlight out there I should just go out and start doing the work instead of thinking about it so get a coffee into me and get to work.
so I've got a few jobs to do. Uh, I'm installing this steaming light on the front of the mast. So I just got to wire that up. Protect the uh, the wiring with the aluminium tape like we have here. I have got to this is the furler. Every grub screw I've got to remove. There's about four, there's about 30 of them. And just reseal them with um, thread locker. I've also got to do that on the luff track of the mast, which means I've got to be upside down on the ground on my back in the gravel to lock tight or thread lock each one of those grub screws because they always come loose and then the big challenge is I'm going to recut the mast base by hand with a grinder because I've got too much rake on the mast it was uh, cut wrong and too much rake and the boom hits the bimini so I will make the four stay a little shorter and the cap stays are a little sh longer and uh, try and correct this rake when I spoke to the rigger he didn't want to touch it he said nah you can do it but he's not going to do it so I'm a bit scared about that one but uh, I've been wanting to do this for seven years now. This is the first time the mast has been off the boat, so I gotta do it. Alright, let's get into it. Pensacola at the marina and the mast is going up today. 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 I uh, was sleeping until about 3 a.m. this morning and just woke up thinking of all the jobs I had to do. So I just got up at 4 o'clock and started doing them. And now we're done and the crane will get here in about four hours time. So and I got everything done I wanted to get done, which was good because the crane was rushing us. The, um, there's a weather coming this afternoon and they were saying you need to have it up by lunchtime. So we actually had less than a day with the mast on the ground. But we got it all done. Yeah. And later this afternoon we will be a sailboat again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yay. Yay.
squeaking. <laughs> 